In this chapter, we will take a rigorous look at infinite series. Our goal will be to explore convergence tests, which determine whether a given series converges or diverges, rather than trying to find the actual sum of a series. Here, we want to review the definition of a converging series, which will connect series to sequences. Let AN be a sequence of real numbers. An infinite series of real numbers is a formal expression of the form a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on. For shorthand, we use the summation symbol to write sum from j equals 1 to infinity of a sub j to denote the series and call the sequence a sub n the defining sequence of the series. Now you probably recall from your calculus days that infinite series are a bit trickier than finite sums. For example, if I told each of you to add the numbers from 1 to 1,000 before our next class, you may say, nah, I have better things to do with my time. But you would understand exactly what I was asking you to do. However, if I told each of you to add 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth going on forever, without your calculus knowledge, you may quickly realize this is a tough problem. To see how tough this can be, Let's look at a fun example. Here we have the sum 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6 and so on. This is a problem I use to introduce series in my calculus class. I ask the students to determine the sum. Some students group terms like this and decide the series diverges to negative infinity. But they could have just as easily have grouped them like this and decided the series diverges to positive infinity. Actually, Euler, the master of us all, said the series, if it converged, would converge to one-fourth. Hopefully we'll have time to see why Euler made this seemingly outrageous claim at some later point. But I just wanted to point out that determining the right definition of a convergent series is a hard problem. So let's see what definition mathematicians decided was the right one. Given an infinite series, the sequence of partial sums associated to the series is defined by s sub n, which is the sum up to the nth term. If the limit of the partial sums exists and converges to a value we'll call s, then we say the series converges to s and write sum of a sub j from j equals 1 to infinity equals s. As with sequences, if the series does not converge, then we say it diverges. Let's make sure we're clear about the partial sums s sub n. Given a series starting with j equals 1, we'll start the sequence of partial sums with 1 as well. Then s1 is the first term of the series a sub 1. s2 is the sum a1 plus a2. s3 is the sum of the terms up to a3, a1 plus a2 plus a3. We continue so that s sub n is the sum of the terms up to a sub n. Each time we add one more term of the series and then one more and then one more. And if the sequence s sub n of partial sums converges to s, then we say the infinite series a sub j also converges to s. A few quick remarks before looking at a couple of examples. First, it is actually impossible to add infinitely many numbers. This is why we use the phrase formal expression. However, when we put it in the context of finite sums, i.e. the partial sums and a limit, then the process is feasible. In other words, to make sense of an infinite sum, we use two ideas we understand well, finite sums and the limit of a sequence. This is why the definition is so nice. Second, as we said in our introduction, it will often be good enough to know if a series converges or diverges without explicitly knowing a limit. It is much harder to find the limit or the sum of a series than it is for sequences, since it is hard to get a closed form for the general partial sum. Finally, as with sequences, if the tail of a series converges, then so will any other tail. But unlike sequences, the value of the series changes. For example, we'll see that the sum of 1 over 2 to the n from n equals 0 to infinity is equal to 2. 
However, the sum of 1 over 2 to the n from n equals 1 to infinity is 1. Though they have different starting points, n equals 0 and n equals 1, both series converge. However, the sum of the series changes. We're ready to see the definition in action. For our first example, let's look at the sum of negative 1 to the n. We need to start by finding the partial sums of this series. Since our series begins with n equals 0, we will start the sequence of partial sums with n equals 0. Hence, s sub 0 is the first term of the series, a sub 0, which is positive 1. s sub 1 is the sum of a 0 plus a 1, 1 minus 1, so 0. s2 is the sum of the terms up to a2, 1 minus 1 plus 1, so s2 equals 1. S3, the sum of the terms up to A3, is 0. By now we see the pattern and recognize the partial sums as the sequence 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. Since the sequence of partial sums diverges, we know the series negative 1 to the n diverges as well. Notice, we had to use the definition of convergence and rely on partial sums to find the correct answer. Otherwise, we could have been led astray. Suppose we had tried grouping the terms. Then we could have mistakenly thought the answer was 0. Or, if we had grouped them differently, we could have mistakenly thought the answer was 1. The problem is that while associativity holds for finite sums, infinite sums behave strangely. Associativity does not hold. This is why we must use partial sums. Let's look at one final example, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. For this example, we need a fact, which is that 1 over 2 to the n equals 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. Why is this true? If we start with the expression on the right, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, we can use exponent rules to rewrite this as 2 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n, and now the statement becomes obvious. We're now ready to consider the partial sums of this series. Sn equals a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth dot 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 plus 1 over 2 to the n. We'll use our fact from above to rewrite each term of the partial sum. Since we have a finite sum, we can group terms however we like and cancel all terms in the middle so that our partial sum simplifies to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. Finally, by definition, the sum of the series is equal to the limit of the partial sums. And since 1 over 2 to the n converges to 0 as n approaches infinity, the sum of the series is 1. This is all for our introduction into a converging series. We'll talk much more about this in class. Thanks so much.